Hello everyone! My name is Denton and today we're going to be reading Jack and the Beanstalk from the Storytime Magazine. How many of you have read that story before? How many of you have ever heard me read that story? No? Okay, then let's get started. Open your uh, magazine to page 17. Jack and the Beanstalk. Hello to all the boys named Jack out there. Once upon a time, there was a poor widow who had an only son called Jack. They lived in a tiny cottage, and all they owned in the world was a cow called Milky White. Every morning, Jack took a pail of milk from Milky White to sell at the market. But Milky White was getting old, and one morning, she stopped giving milk. Jack's mother despaired, for without the milk to sell, they had no money for food. You'll have to take Milky White to the market and sell her, she told Jack, and be sure to get a good price. So off Jack went, leading the cow behind him. He hadn't gone too far when he met an old man. Good morning, Jack, said the old man. Jack wondered how the old man knew his name. Where are you off to with this fine cow? The old man inquired. Jack explained about Milky White. The old man looked thoughtful. What do you say to a trade? If you can tell me how many beans make five, I'll do a fair swap with you. Jack answered quickly. Two in each hand and one in the mouth. That's how many beans make five. Well done, Jack, said the old man. You're a smart boy indeed. Here are the beans themselves. And the old man pulled some strange looking beans from his pocket and said, I'll trade these for your cow. Ha, oh, no thank you, said Jack. That's not a fair swap. Ah, oh, but you see, said the old man, these beans are magic beans. If you plant them today, You'll have the best bean stocks in the world tomorrow. Jack thought that sounded good. So he decided to take the magic beans. He handed over Milky White and set off for home again. What do you think his mother's going to think about that? Did he do what she asked him to do? Let's find out what she says. His mother was surprised to see him back so soon. Did you get a good price for the cow? She asked. Jack told his mother about the swap he had made for the magic beans, and she flew into a rage. You gave away our cow for these beans? She cried. What were you thinking? And with that, she threw the beans out the window and sent Jack to bed without any supper. The next morning when Jack woke up, his room looked darker than usual. He opened his curtains to find a giant beanstalk outside. The beans were magic after all. Jack quickly, quickly got dressed and began to climb the beanstalk. He climbed and climbed until at last he reached the top, which was just above the clouds. He stepped onto a road and followed it all the way to an enormous castle. As he approached the castle, he could smell food. 
Jack's tummy rumbled with hunger. He hadn't eaten any breakfast before he had left. He banged on the castle door. Bum, 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 bum. And it was answered by a giantess who didn't see Jack because he was so small. Down here, down here, he cried to get her attention. The giantess jumped when she saw him. What are you doing here? Don't you know my husband is a giant who eats little boys? Oh, please don't let him eat me, said Jack. I've come so far and I'm so hungry. Please, could you spare me some food? The giantess took pity on Jack and carried him to the kitchen where she gave him a hunk of bread and some cheese. Jack was eating when suddenly the castle shook with the thud of giant footsteps. Thud, 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 thud. Oh my, said the giantess. I can't let my husband find you here. Quick, jump into my apron pocket. And she hid Jack away. Jack peeped out of her pocket to see a huge, grumpy-looking giant walk into the kitchen, holding three cows by the ankles. Wife, I am hungry, he said. Cook these for lunch. Then he stopped and sniffed the air and growled. Be fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Scared, Jack dunked his head inside the pocket, and the giantess said, You must be mistaken, dear. Perhaps you can smell the clothes of the boy you ate yesterday. Now go and rest, and I'll bring you lunch. The giant thudded out of the kitchen, and Jack leapt out of the apron pocket. He was about to run away, but the giant's wife stopped him. He smells you, she said. Wait until he has his nap after lunch. So the giantess served her hungry husband a huge lunch, and Jack waited anxiously for him to finish. However, when the giant's plate was empty, instead of napping, he took out some bags of gold coins and began to, began to count them. Eventually, his eyes grew heavy until he fell asleep. The giant began to snore. Do we need you snore? No? Do you want to try to snore with me? Snore with me. Very good. All right, back to the story. Jack couldn't believe how much gold the giant had, and unable to resist, he quickly heaved a money bag over his shoulder and dragged it out of the castle to the top of the beanstalk and all the way back home again. His mother had been out of her mind with worry about him, and she was waiting for him at the bottom. Jack dropped the bag of gold coins before her and said, See, mother, wasn't I right about the beans? At that, his mother danced a happy jig. Though they had enough gold to last them a long time, Jack was an adventurous lad, and he couldn't wait to climb the beanstalk again. A few days later, he went up. And this time, when he reached the giant's castle, the giantess 
was busy sweeping the doorstep. Good morning, Jack said politely. The food you gave me the other day was so delicious. Could you spare me some more, please? You silly boy for coming back, she said. Go away now, or the giant will eat you up. He's very grumpy because he's lost one of his money bags. But she took pity on Jack, as he was small and thin, and she carried him to the kitchen. Jack was about to start eating when the thud of giant footsteps came stomping towards them. Quick as a flash, Jack hid in the cupboard. The giant entered the room, sniffed the air, and boomed. Fee, fi, fo, fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense, said his wife. You must be imagining things. And she told him to go and wait for his lunch. This time, when the giant finished eating, he asked his wife to bring his golden hen. She put it on the dining table before him, and the giant said, Lay! The hen clucked, Gook! and laid an egg of solid gold. Jack couldn't believe his eyes. The giant held the egg tightly in his hands, closed his eyes, and soon fell asleep. <laughs> Jack tiptoed up to the dining table, grabbed the hen, and sprinted out of the room. But as he reached the castle door, the hen began to squawk. Squawk, 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 squawk. As Jack ran towards the beanstalk, he heard the giant shouting, Wife! Wife, where's my golden hen? Jack dashed down the beanstalk as swiftly as he could. When he reached the bottom, he called his mother to show her the golden hen. Jack said, lay! And just as it had for the giant, the hen laid a golden egg. Jack's mother was delighted. Now they would always have money whenever they needed it. But Jack's adventures weren't over yet. He wanted to climb the beanstalk again. A few days later, up he went. This time, Jack crept into the castle's kitchen through an open window. The giantess was preparing lunch and did not see him. Soon, he heard the thud of the giant's footsteps, so he quickly ducked behind a bucket. The giant entered the room, sniffed the air, and roared. Fee, fi, fo, fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman! Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make me bread. Well, of course you can, laughed the giantess. You can smell the clothes of the lad you ate for dinner last night. But the giant felt sure he could smell a fresh boy. So he searched the cupboards and even looked inside the oven. But he didn't find Jack. The giant gave up, and as he had the other days, he went off to eat his giant lunch. Afterwards, he asked his wife to bring him his magic harp. She set it on the dining table, and the giant said, Sing! Straight away, the magical harp started to sing a beautiful melody. Soon, the giant drifted into a deep and peaceful sleep. <laughs>
Jack thought the harp was amazing. So he tiptoed across the dining table, grabbed it, and ran for the door. But the harp cried out, Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to see Jack running out of the door. Jack ran as fast as his legs could carry him. But thanks to his huge strides, the giant soon started to catch up. With his heart pounding and the giant close behind, Jack leapt onto the beanstalk and nimbly slid all the way down. The giant climbed onto the beanstalk too, but it shook and shuddered under his great weight. He was so big and clumsy, he just couldn't keep up. When Jack reached the bottom, he grabbed his axe. Everybody grab your axe. And he chopped and he chopped. Everybody chop with me. He chopped and he chopped at the beanstalk with all his strength. Soon, the stalk wobbled and swayed and it snapped in two bringing the boy-eating giant crashing to the ground. The giant was killed in an instant. From that day on, all the boys in the kingdom were safe, and, his ja and Jack and his mother were never poor again, thanks to the hen that laid golden eggs and the magical singing harp, which people came from far and wide to see. Thanks for joining me for this story. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know that I did. Be sure to remember to read every single day and join me for the next story. Bye-bye.